Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So this is going to be another one in our new deeper look into the Bible, the most published book of all time. And, you know, again, this one's going to be um, a little bit more concise. I want to just kind of expound on like a few little items at a time. I do have kind of <laughs> a big video that um, has more of what's going on today and what should be something that we're all seriously looking at but from a historical biblical perspective uh, that video will be upcoming but I want to just keep going with what we were talking about in the last video as we were just looking at the first line in Genesis Genesis 1 and realizing it doesn't say God created the heavens and the earth it's in plural and again it's it's a case of Things are not exactly the way that we have been given from the modern, popular, fundamentalist kind of point of view. The traditions that we have today, they are changed from what we had in the past. And as we were saying, so many things, what our holidays, for instance, are, are not truly uh, coming out of the Abrahamic tradition. They're just kind of a Abrahamicized version of earlier traditions. Right. And and that's just kind of sort of cheating. I mean, they teach us all the time in school, you know, don't do plagiarism. When one of the most popular books on the planet, it's it's just kind of that's how it is and I'm just trying to be gentle, but the truth is the truth. And you know, when when you're looking at the word God, the word Lord, you have to ask who or what because there's hundreds there's hundreds according to so many so many different writings out there and the word used in the original writings is, is often not what we might think it is and that changes everything completely so again when we look to other myths and legends then we start to see some congruencies when we translate things a certain way all of a sudden Oh, okay. Well, this fits totally in line with what the Greeks said, or with what the Sumerians said, or the Akkadians, or the Canaanites, or the Egyptians. Again, it, it's all a matter of semantics, but boy, can just simply changing, as you know, many words have more than one meaning, uh, changing what becomes the dominant meaning that was not necessarily the original meaning changes everything. And just looking at this painting, is this God ruling on his throne with angels or is this Zeus with the Olympians? Again, it, it's really, again, a retelling of the same stories. The ancient council of nine. When Prometheus gave fire to mankind, he infuriated Zeus. So to punish Prometheus, Zeus had him chained to a rock. And as the myth goes, an eagle came down to him every day, ate his liver while he was still alive pretty painful. The liver grew back and the eagle returned to do the same to him the next day. This is one of those stories that we have from Greek mythology. The Council of Nine, which was headed by Zeus and eight other deities that formed in order to punish Prometheus. Who is Prometheus? Prometheus was a titan. And again, how about the war between the titans and those that we might call the elder gods? Or the Olympian gods. Hmm. What's it really? What is the real story here? The real story here is a battle of the Yugas. It, it really truly is. Because again, many have said that the Titans represent natural forces. Uh, forces of the universe in a natural order. And many have said that really then when you're looking at the Olympian gods, it's just humanity uh, deified in our erroneous ways with all our all of our faults as we could say these olympian gods uh they had a lot of human characteristics they could be jealous full of ego they could be angered they could be furious uh they could be spiteful they would play with humans like toys and just kind of use people kind of like the leadership of the planet today yeah, I mean, you have a lot of parallels going on there, you know, beings that are very 
greedy, very mischievous, have no problems lying like a rug. You know, the politicians these days, they lie like we breathe. They only say what they need to say to keep themselves in their position for one more moment to make sure that they can afford all of their lavish items, you know, their big houses, their nice cars, you know. So you can look at the politicians of today and a lot of the writings that go back, you know, as above, so below, there's not much difference. So you had Aphrodite, Apollo, Athena, Demeter, Hephaestus, Hera, Hermes, Poseidon, and Zeus. This is all about punishing Prometheus and also mankind. When we look to, you know, and well, we'll go into that a little bit later. But again, this is all about the yugas. At the end, he puts down to the author of this, um, the council that governs the church of satan calls himself the council of the nine actually there's people out there that channel the council of the nine when we look to psalm 82 it, it has been said to be a very very problematic psalm and the psalms themselves are most definitely in some cases some of the beautiful most beautiful works in the bible and yet this one can be problematic because how does it read well this is the new international version we could read all all these different versions if you want because uh, some will say well you got to read the king james version well there's the king james uh, here's the niv and this is the new king james uh okay let's go with the new king james whatever and you know in the old days when i used to do this before the internet it was it was a case where i would sit down on the floor and spread out, I'd have 12 to 20 different versions of the Bible, and I would literally look at each one, one at a time. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges amongst the gods. Wait a minute. If you're talking monotheism, there's only one God. But right here, it contradicts that whole line of thought. He judges amongst the gods. Again, we were talking about the word Elohim, which can mean judges, rulers, mighty ones, or those from above, amongst other things. Now listen to this. It's plaintive. It's wailing. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Instead, defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Free them from the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are unstable. I said, you are gods. And again, it, it depends. What's that word, right? You have to look to the word. The word is Elohim, mighty ones, judges, rulers, beings from above. You are what? Elohim, and all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all nations. So when you look at this, again, it, it's, it's a case of confusion for, for many people when they read this for the first time. So that was the New King James Version. You'll find they're, they're not too different whether we're looking at the NIV they're frustrated. This person is saying, how long are you going to defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? This is what happens in a Kali Yuga. This is what happens in a dark age. Who is in charge here? It's not the creator of the universe because the creator of the universe allows free will. And it's through free will that all possibilities exist. And it's up to us to find our own way. It's up to us to point out the wicked system and to help others awaken to the wicked system so we can replace that wicked system. So here you are. You're reading from Psalms. And more than likely, you know, when was this written? It was probably written somewhere in the 200 to maybe 600 BC. A long time ago. This is, this is again, this, these Kali Yugas, they do last for you know, several thousand years. The system was in place. The person is frustrated. 
he sees or she sees injustice going on. And the old King James, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth amongst the gods. It's the same word again. It's coming from Elohim. And, and again, our interpretation of making everything into God is, is an, a very, very erroneous one. You know, I think this gives the idea when we're looking at the Bible that this is ancient times. This is like a long time ago. But if you really look at it and you see what's going on and if you see things in a cyclical nature, we are here right now. You can parallel so many things that are going on right now with everything that's right here. And this is the Song of Moses. And Deuteronomy 32, I've quoted it a hundred times at least in different videos. And this is kind of the lament of Moses. Um, Moses, according to the story, never saw the chosen land, led the Israelites through the desert for 40 years. And he never got to get, you know, a step on a live foot into the Holy Land. <laughs> you know, he never, he never did it. That was up to Joshua. And that's... Um, that's another story, and that's a story that we need to really look at closely because it's happening again today. Just like Cindy was talking about, we are in these times. And in fact, they will be writing stories about us. Mm -hmm. and, and again, you know, it'll be the same thing. It'll be like, how can wickedness prevail? Look at all this. This is so unjust what we see going on. Ah, give you, O heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, the small rain upon the tender herb as the showers upon the grass. Very, very poetic, is it very not? Very poetic, yes. But what we want to get to is this. When the Most High divided nations, aha, uh -huh, the Most High, divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the boundary of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. That right there makes absolutely no sense at the way it's written. Why? Because this is in the beginning. Israel wasn't around in the beginning. Israel was Jacob. Jacob was renamed Israel after Wrestling with the angel of God, where? <laughs> Peniel. Hello. Yeah, the ladder, the 33 rungs in the ladder, the human spine. Again, th this is a total mistranslation. And if you're, if you're not familiar with other myths and other legends from other sources, specifically Greek and, and also Sumerian, then you, you, you're you just going to look at this and be like, ah, it's one of those biblical mysteries because it doesn't make any sense. And when that happens, you know, really, do we just turn our heads every time or do we finally sit down and start asking questions and really start to understand what is going on? And I know it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. And, and again, what they do is they take advantage of people and, and they bank on the fact that most people won't look deeply. So again, what we have echoed here is the same as what we see from Greek mythology and Sumerian mythology. This is what happened when those that we would call, again, the Anunnaki came and took control of the planet. And so each took their own tribe when we look to the sumerian belief system uh, the sumerians truly believed that their deities each city state had its own patreon deity and and they truly believed at certain times that patreon deity was there in the temple the temple was their house what does bethel mean it means literally the house of el or the house of god the house of the mighty ones, the, high, the house of those that came from above and, and ruled the land. So again, you have some head deity, head mighty one, 
dividing the nations and splitting them amongst others of its kind. And then it goes on to say, for the Lord's portion is his people, or Yahweh's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Now, again, Jacob renamed Israel later. So, you know, again, it, 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 it's a mistranslation. Uh, and really, when it's talking about setting the bounds of the people according to the number of of the children of Israel, it, it should really read quite differently. It, it's really the sons of the gods. It's the sons of the mighty ones. It, it, it's each quote unquote divine being getting their own tribe and their own tribe would actually worship them. And when we look to sacrifice, you know, the sacrifices were brought to the temple. And it's even in there, in the Bible. And Cindy's quoted a million times, when they would sacrifice a lamb, the smell of the flesh pleased the deity. I, I, I could never understand that either. It's like how this is, the, the, this is God, and, and how could this please, how could the smell of burning flesh please this this god and really you just keep coming to the same conclusion it's like there's something here that's just not right and i i just don't think it's very fair when people are being given something as their belief system something that guides their inner core something that guides their very being and they they feel that their soul is tied up in this belief system and if they believe anything different they're going to burn in hell forever when it's just manipulation it's a lot of manipulation by beings that we can't even see at this time well sometimes we get glimpses we do see strange things in the sky at different times so the lord alone did lead them there was no strange god with them I mean, right there, okay, there's only one God, but it's saying there's no strange God, then that means there's other gods. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just so obvious. But again, most people that really truly push a fundamentalist point of view on the Bible, they don't have a clue about the Bible. And, you know, again, I, I've seen so many people over the years that will say, well, yeah, I never did read it cover to cover. Uh, I just like the, the Gospel of John or... You know, First Corinthians is a favorite or whatever, one particular psalm or just a different, but they don't, just one different section or another, but they don't look at this. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Wait a minute to new gods that came newly up? Huh. Yes, because extraterrestrials were always coming and going in, in these days in the past. It says, it reads the exact same way over here in this other translation. And that's the psalm. Uh, again, we could check the different ones to see how they read. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up whom your fathers feared not. And so it, it goes on. It goes on and on, you know. And, and again, it's, the, it's known as the Song of Moses. And I love looking at hermeneutics and people that are <laughs> biblical students, you know, maybe they're in college, maybe they're going through theology. And <clears throat> when they hit these things, they just got to say, this, this is strange. Can you give me a clear answer on this? Yeah, God or Judges in Exodus 21, 6 and Exodus 22, 8 through 9. Again, these things are constantly being revised and rewritten. And in Hebrew, they never wrote down the vowels, so open to interpretation. And absolutely, there are contradictions in there. When we look at it and we use Elohim, again, Elohim could mean judges, mighty ones. Uh, it, it could mean quite a few things, literally translate as gods or, again, those from above, those from the heavenly realms. And where are the heavenly realms? Well, if you ask them in these days, where's the, where's the heavens? They would all kind of just point up 
over there. And I, I think um, this makes it very difficult because people, <laughs> people just automatically assume since they're pointing up, well, that's that's the heaven. When you you start to understand that these are different entities coming from outer space to our planet and ruling over man and this is the book that they use to do it with i think it's really important that we find our own our own inner understanding and not just always believe something else or at least hand our power over to a book that has so much s strangeness in it i mean I, I think we're waking up to a point where we really have to ask the honest question what's going on who are the controllers who, who are they? Obviously, it's not humans looking after humans. It's the same control system. They're just in the shadows. And Exodus 21, 6. Then his master shall bring him to the Elohim, and he shall bring him to the door or, or the doorpost. And the master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall be his slave forever. Exodus 21, 6. Now, uh, let's go on this one first. If the thief is not found, the owner of the house shall come near to God to show whether or not he has put his hand to his neighbor's property. For every breach of trust, whether it is for an ox or a donkey, for a sheep or a cloak, or any kind of lost thing of which one says this is it, the case of both parties shall come before who? The Elohim, the mighty ones, the ones that come here from above. The one whom the Elohim condemns shall pay double to his neighbor. Judges. The judges. Again, these are the rulers that came from the sky that are ruling over humans. And they actually condone slavery. Oh yeah, we've talked about that before. When men strive together and hit a pregnant woman so that her children come out, but there is no harm, the one who hit her shall surely be fined as the woman's husband shall impose on him. And he shall pay as the judges determine. Exodus twenty one twenty two. Yeah, you know, again, twenty five hundred plus times the word for God translates to Elohim, mighty ones, powerful ones. When we understand in other myths that they have the same legends, kingship comes from on high. Kingship comes from a different place. In fact, it comes from Nibiru. The whole system comes from Nibiru. This is not the words of, of Zechariah Sitchin. This is, the, the, that's the Bible for you. And Plato talked about it as well. And, and that whole little Genesis 6 line where they just gave you a little teaser text. Uh, you know, we could look to the book of Enoch, but again, it's, it's also from the same, uh, the same school of philosophy where things are again mistranslated. The reality is these stories are echoed. They're echoed all over the world, all over the world. And they talk about the golden age. There was a golden age. Now, the golden age, humans are like the gods. This is, the, this is again, uh, the age in which we are around those beings that we would actually call the devas, which uh, <laughs> in Christianity, they've turned them into devils. Yeah, well, of course, because, you know, the system is run by true demonic entities. And so, you know, again, they're going to portray themselves as the good guys and vice versa. And we see the same thing time and time again. And we see the deities, you know, again, copulating with humans and having kids. And having certain bloodlines and then, you know, leaving those bloodlines in charge, too. And, you know, again, you, you see all the correlations, you know, correlating Yahweh and Zeus. Absolutely. Feeling the energy of Zeus. Not a nice guy, really. Very, very selfish and very, very out for themselves. And the same thing, you know, we see when we look through these other myths and legend around the world and we also see these different councils sometimes seven sometimes nine sometimes 12 but again these heavenly beings ruling over humans actually judging over humans and then they leave and kingship is given to humanity 
from the ones they left in charge. And thus, when we look to the Gil Bates of the world, when we look to the Popes, when we look to the Soroses, when we look to all these different people, these bloodlines, obviously the kings and the queens, etc., etc., this is their, this is their, this is the ones they left in charge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, it's really difficult. We were just talking to a family member about this earlier today. When it comes to religion and we look at the, the Vatican and the simple fact that the Vatican has its very own Dyson sphere sitting there in the front lawn. I mean, this is this is a very advanced piece of technology that we shouldn't really know anything about. But they have their own but they have their own little image of it you know i mean they're definitely in contact with extraterrestrials absolutely so i hope you guys got something out of this and we'll continue on this series because this is endless endless thousands of videos we could go into in this and you know again it's a case of well, you'll find so many people that have truly uh become theologians they really don't believe the story they are giving it, it's just you know it, it's just more than obvious yet again it doesn't mean that there isn't a source of all things a singular source doesn't mean that this universe was not intentionally created by uh, a being that we could barely even begin to comprehend absolutely but yet these entities are not that no they're not as always source bless and namaste Namaste.